Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame at Red Dragon. We've got something a little bit different for you guys today. It's a 3v3, but it's destruction to 9,000 points, which does usually mean, I mean, off of a 3,000 point start, it's to either surrender or the time limit. So in this case, we definitely don't go to the time limit. And my teammates are Thong of Shaq and Thong of Shakira, and I will admit, I really don't want to know all that much about Shaquille O'Neal's Thong, but Shakira might be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing if you want to see these guys around more often as they do I think pretty much exclusively play Destruction. If you want more thongs on the channel, go ahead and hit uh, like, share, subscribe, and all that YouTube nonsense. But my deck is going to be a Soviet deck designed specifically for a team game on Destruction. And what does that mean? It means a double fob start. It means we're going to see an Uragon. We're going to see a Smirch, but not quite yet, as I do have to get some sort of map control first in Ivan. It also means that, I mean, working as intended, this is going to be a little bit of a turtle sort of deck. And, uh, I don't love that necessarily, I do love over-aggressive moves even if they come back to bite me. The initial deployment though, a little bit weird, I have a T80 UK here, 200 points. I was expecting Ivan to come under attack potentially very early, that's why we have the double stack of Osas, that's why we have cheap MTLBVs carrying just regular Moto Strelke, as well as BTR9 do some Spetsnaz crew and some other units here. My allies are both playing Red Dragons and Shaquille is in Leonid and Elena, while uh, Shakira is in Cheriton. So, Gornostrelki 90 have been deposited. Their intention, I know it's a unit that gets a bit of a bad rap, I think, I, but it's also one that I have trouble using, so I don't know. It might be a deserved reputation. But the idea here was to stick around in this section, in that section, and screen off things into the open field, potentially allowing a push in that direction and definitely preventing one. Well, that was the intention anyway. But having dropped those guys off and not seen anything from my opponent over in Boris, I just send the MI8 MTVs forward. I mean, they have nice rocket pods, the S13s are basically like snebs, and there was a lot going on over here as well, so already an engagement in Cheriton. I think Shakira did also have another person advising who was, um, uh, I don't know, it's nice to have that second set of eyes there. My MI8 MTV is coming over the ridge, and we see some vehicles able to get one kill. It looks just kind of like Humvees. If you go in real close, that looks like Humvees. So that tells me a couple of things. One, US, maybe US and Canada. We got a couple of kills there, but 10 point kills wasn't really what I was looking for. And so having used one full volley almost, we do just keep going. There's no anti-air, there's nothing responding, there's no plane response. I spot a fob, which I do mark for later on. Now I don't have any howitzers in this deck, and that is something that's a bit of a problem. But uh, we do spot more Humvees. These were reinforcing though, and I, that told me that there's probably infantry in them and that means much more valuable kills. So Light Rifleman 90 are relatively expensive, and combined with the Humvees, we get a decimatingly high number of kills there, 120 points total, and just moving forward using the last couple rocket pods, only two left in the chamber on those Humvees, and this, that is a Humvee CP, command vehicle. And, I mean, all right, so what does that tell me? It means that I can keep an eye on Anna, and if I don't see it uncapped, I can reasonably assume that this hasn't moved. So, well, okay, that's fine. What does that mean? It means I'm going to be buying some artillery. My MI8 MTVs unfortunately don't quite make it back as a couple of AA pieces do intercept, but I mean, they got their values worth and that's what matters on destruction, so I hey, no real complaints there. Alpha Jet A is going to be dropping off some napalm and that, uh, Shaq here is having a bit of a hard time. So ZTZ 85 340 point tank, but his infantry screen is getting hammered, the napalm doesn't help. And a Flak Panzer is surprisingly combat capable against Bochang Su at range. Here comes the Oregon buy, and that is just going to be headed in, trying to see if I can get it. I mean, again, if, I really regretted not having a Howitzer for that precision sort of work that you do need sometimes, but uh, I mean, we can give it a shot. Oregons do have the HE power to get the kills there. And meanwhile, Cheriton has been a little bit of a wash. Two Leclerc still here, only one of them damaged. T90S, both of them damaged. So I guess a little bit in favor of Wait What How and his Blue 4. Looks like French team there. Looks A1 is also spotting, but this is not a Eurocore deck. That just is from the other teammate whose name. We're going to give it a go. YLI, Lee Sotajumala? I guess. Uh, for the Blue 14, apologies if I slaughtered the pronunciation there, but the Uragan is firing in. Let's see how that does. Anna has not ever been decapped the Blue 14, and if we have decent clustering here, we might be able to get a kill. So not quite where I need it to be, not quite where I need it to be. That's more on target, and it looks like nothing out of the first half. Still not moved, though. So I was hoping, and there it is. We get one rocket just close enough. 
110 point kill, but Anna still caps. Turns out there was a redundant CV there. And this player has started with four CVs, one for Anna, sorry, two for Anna, one for center, one for Boris. So trying to make sure his team had an income, but sort of at the expense of his initial deployment. And seeing that Anna was still capped, I was kind of guessing that's what was going on. We haven't really had any engagements here over on the left side in Ivan just yet. So we are going to be moving forward relatively soon, as well as supporting um, my allies here in Elena and Dimitri. But, I mean, here's the thing. So I always say, you gotta play the game mode. And in Conquest, that means push Elena, get the calf there. In Conquest, we'd be losing. We don't have Jot, we don't have Nicholas, we don't have Leonid. Our opponents have a lot of this. But we're up about 550 points right now. Of course, they do have an income advantage, and that is something we have to deal with. But that's not always a benefit in destruction. Unfortunately for us, Peace Rhine comes in. T90S just out of smoke, does get double tapped by that Peace Rhine. And that's a nice kill for the Blue 4 team, as uh, they need to make up some points here in this game. It's... It's not impossible, but for right now, and here's the thing, the destruction games I've had that go well, you get a good initial engagement and then you just kind of wait. You make your opponent who needs to make up that point value attack you, and in so doing, you get more kills than he does and you just widen the gap and widen the gap and widen the gap and keep trading at, uh, at a beneficial uh, engagement. And I've actually seen people win destruction games forced back to one zone. It's kind of annoying for someone who plays Conquest as much as me. I mean, that is a... it's a strategic loss there in terms of territory on the ground. It's just a win because of game mechanics. And, I mean, yeah, it's also a win looking at it realistically as in you don't want to lose troops, but very often those are relatively close. It's like, did you really win anything there if you had uh, let's say 200 points equivalent less losses. That's one big tank and a couple of expensive infantry. Tornado ECR coming in does get a nice kill on some of our radar AA, and I love this plane. I know there are people who don't because you only get one of them, but the 55, uh, 52 50 range and 65% accuracy is just pretty wonderful. A little light on AP power is another criticism thrown at that, but really it's Blue Force, specifically Commonwealth um, AA, that has enough armor to survive that anyway. So, one plane taken down from Shakira and another B5 bomber is coming in trying to punish that Crotel and anything that might be back in that section does take a hit and oof, narrowly avoiding death and the B5 bomb is enough to take out the Crotel, maybe damage some other things, I would like to see it a little bit farther back, uh, but it certainly was a good bombing run and here's the thing, my Uragan is going to be reloading, we're going to be bringing out more, but I've sort of been sitting here going, okay, well, this is not making me happy. So NTLBVs are going to be pushing forward ever so slightly. Spetsnaz Guru are trying to see anything in this zone, but I don't see anything still. I mean, geez, we're nearly 10 minutes into the game, so I'm going to be taking the offensive here on the left-hand side of the board. Peace Run comes in again, looking for another kill, but Evac ordered and another plane, Jaguar A, looking for that Radar AA, which, I mean, Red Dragons is somewhat reliant on that for plane killing. Uh, we saw the PGZ earlier, and that is a very common pick. But Joe Gostai are sparring with Jaeger, and the, the healthy group here will definitely get a better engagement. These guys are already uh, panicked, and I mean, they're just regular training anyway, so that MG3 isn't necessarily as imposing as you might think. But persistent pressure from Shaq, and we do have Bo Chung Su through into the back line, able to spot, able to potentially get a kill or two, but a little bit of unfortunate timing. These guys almost certainly seen by the Blue 4 player crossing the road. Uh, you can do a couple things for that, but, I mean, if you want to cross the road, you take that risk. So, Jaeger, actually surprisingly still alive, and the Geoglost Dai are a little bit injured. I think there might have been a little bit of friendly fire, mortar fire there, and my KA-29 TVs trying to support, trying to get those rocket pods online a little too far forward, and we get taken out by AA. Actually, wasn't the one here, it was the one over on the left-hand side, but I only saw the position, and Shakira, or Shaq, rather, saw the position. Man, I really hope that I don't mix up thongs belonging to Shaquille O'Neal and Shakira as easily as I messed up saying it. Well, the image that puts in your head, I mean, I played with these guys before, at least Shakira before, and I think Shaq is part of the same group, but man, that's just that's just an unfortunate image. Uh, okay, moving on. My Gornostrelki 90 are pushing forward through the woods, and the intention is to just infiltrate the back line if I can. I don't want these guys fighting infantry, but that's why the MTLBVs went first. It told me, okay, well, I don't really even have to be afraid of that here. It's very common for there to be infantry in the woods on the left-hand side, and that's, I don't know, it, Gornostrelki 90 won't trade at cost for that, which it's destruction. That has to be the first thing on your mind. We do also spot the Fuchs Fufu, and I could have shot in with the Uragan again, but I was hoping by this point somebody else had some 
tube artillery that could do a bit more of a precision strike. Alpha Jet A is going to be dropping those Napalm Bombs. Evac Winchester, and I think he's going after the, after the Geo, <laughs> Geo Ghost die. I really struggle with some of these pronunciations, man. Very nice Napalm too. It's actually able to block the Geo Ghost die from retreating. And also, I mean, panic, stun, a little bit of damage. Light Rifling taking some fire here. But the uh, 85-3 is down to a single point of strength left, and that has to be retreated back, hopefully, to those little cargo trucks. Now I am getting a little bit more underway. MTLBV is moving up. Modestrelki moving up. Just cheap screens. I do have vision from the Guru as well, and I was trying to see, is anything going to shoot at these before I move the Guru up? Now we have more Modestrelki, BRDM-3s, and a T-64 going up. VDV abandoning their garrison position. And it's late enough in the game, I'm sitting there going, okay, you know what? I'm going to invade Boris. We have somewhat comfortable padding here, about 700 points difference between us and the Blue 4 team. So if I could get shots on, I mean, I was just watching this reinforce and reinforce and reinforce the whole game. If I can get shots on that, that's wonderful. Martyr 2s are 30 points, not to mention the usually Panzergren or Panzergren 90 they have inside. And this is a Patriot. So one, no planes for right now, please. But two, that's a Patriot. If I can intercept him, or if I can hit that town and kill him with an Uragon, that would be pretty amazing. See, Uragon is already aiming, already trying to get a fire in on that position. BRDM-3 trying to get through to the woods, the edge of the woods as quickly as I can, hoping to see it. He's still moving. We see him just a blip right there, and that's the Patriot. Side armor, if he even has any on that, is going to be, yeah, it's just zero. It's a vehicle. 120 point kill off the BRDM-3, but this was kind of unexpected. Light rifle in 90, not two, but four so far, shooting in at the BRDM-3. One of them getting a hit, but not quite a kill. I would have potentially loved an ATGM team. If you're going to be holding back here, you need to have good punch. And Light Rifleman 90 don't necessarily have good punch. I mean, they're kind of like Gorno, but they're longer range and a little bit different stats on that, uh, on that long range launcher. So a bit of a mixed bag. And unfortunately for me, I did, I think, retarget the Uragon, so we're not going to be going in after the Roland 3 and the Fuchs Fufu. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, spotted by Lee Ren. Very nice. Very, very nice scout infantry positioning from Shaquille over there. Double spot of Hemp's, and these guys are 40 points each. The BTR-90 is shooting in, trying to get one kill, maybe two. It does allow us to be spotted, but, I mean, hey, that's not terrible. Down to two strength of the BTR-90, three frontal armor is coming in to save the day a little bit, but we do get taken out by the second volley there. So, Leonid is secured. I brought out, this is a weakness to this deck as well, I brought out another UK. That's such a huge investment. I mean, think about it like this. 200 points to secure it, we get plus three as a team together. The return on investment there is relatively slow. It's actually almost double what it is if you can get a cheap 110, 120 or so point uh, command vehicle out there. But I think I was struggling a little bit less than my opponents just through lack of active confrontation. So it seemed like a good buy. It seemed like a, a sort of, you know what, they capped these. Let me just cap Nicholas. Let me cap Leonid. And I didn't really want command infantry up this far just in case it was bombed or something like that. We had seen Napalm out. Uh, Jaguar A not able to find targets dangerously far into our lines. Hua Sung Chong shooting in one hit, potentially a kill there, actually, yeah. Jaguar A taken out by Hua Sung Chong's. You love to see it, unless they're yours, in which case you hate to see it. Leopard 2A4 is stunned here, but I didn't have the guns up there to kill it. I didn't want this T64 BV to take a lot of return fire. So the intention is go up if you can, get a side shot if you can on this 2A4, and then retreat back before the light rifleman can do anything about it. So we are going to be peeking out of the woods. I wish that turret was aimed a little bit better, but there's the swing, there's the shot. One shot, nine points of damage, and he's still moving. So no attack move there quite yet, just now turning, but we do get the 130 point kill. T64 BB is going to be backing up. Modus Relki trying to distract the light rifleman 90. Those super dragons cannot shoot at infantry, so they're reliant on the M16 and the M240, but... I wasn't able to quite pull their targeting priority, so we did take a fair amount of damage, and some Udals are going to be going up there to resupply my T-64. Here comes the Uragon, trying to support in this section of trees. Actually, it's not one Uragon, that's two. So one second Uragon was bought, and... I mean, this is what happens when you allow a Soviet player to not have to refill his front lines. Because the Soviet front line is not cheap. Even with Motostrelki, just the large enough numbers, it's not cheap. Uh, especially if you have things like BRDM-3s supporting uh, Gornostrelki or Spetsnaz Gru. And, I mean, if you give me the points, man, I'll buy double Uragon. Why the hell not? Uh, I kind of needed a smirch here. That was a little bit of an unfortunate pick, but just trying to see if I can get the Fuchs Fufu. Nearly do. It's panicked, but not quite damaged. And that's going to be... Oh, actually, we still have a couple more going in. Let's take a look at that. One of them might get close enough... Doesn't look like it. I mean, the closer you are, the tighter the spread. The farther away you are, the more diverse the spread. Leopard 2 is spotted, but he's going the wrong way. Unfortunately, I would have loved to have that kill from the Gorn Strelke. 
and that's why I'm hanging around there. You might have seen this on one of the highlight or teaser clips that I've been putting up recently, just trying to see how those do. If you haven't, these Gordon Strelke are some serious players uh, when they're up that far. So Light Rifleman 90 did a bit of a number on some of my troops on this side, but the sheer weight of fire is going to be wearing them down. 20 point kill, Motostrelki able to then continue moving up, MTLBVs continuing to move up, and their second group, as well as fire from back here, so these guys I'm not worried about. They're panicked, it's dropping their accuracy. The ones sitting farther back, they have nice line of sight, and they're not panicked. So honestly, I mean, not, not the worst position there for something like that if you're getting pushed. I just, I don't know. I don't like assuming that I'm going to be getting pushed first, necessarily, unless it's an opener like this, where I'm going to be doing something very artillery heavy, very support heavy. It's an interesting mindset. It's destruction. It's not what I'm used to, so I did my best. What can I say? BTR-90 does get a kill on a Vulcan, but that BTR-90 is immediately targeted. Look at that. More light riflemen. Now we have a... We had a double group on that side, probably killed by the Uragon. And Tornado IDS, or 1DS, is coming in another bombing run. But I'm starting to lose some things here in this push. It's not really how I want it to be going. We do spot a triple stack of IHawks, and that's going to prompt the Gornostrelki moving up, hoping we can get that kill. Just... Trying to stay as far into the woods as I can while getting those Mentis M's online. First shot going in, not quite sure what that is. It might be a Vulcan. 25 point kill, that's probably a Vulcan. I mean, yeah, that, almost certainly. Uh, I mean, Jesus. They demolished my Spetsnaz Gru, and the combination of these guys and the Toe 2, it's a bit unorthodox, but it will fend off both infantry and vehicles. We get a second Vulcan kill. Gornostrelki still moving up, still trying to fire in, and uh, I think this was bombing incoming or something like that, so uh, maybe maybe artillery. Double kill on the IHawks off a single volley. You don't get that all the time off Gorno. 55% base accuracy is not amazing, but it's up to 86, 72 based off the range and the veterancy of these guys. We're still just moving forward, getting a couple more Vulcan kills, and trying to put as much pressure as I can on that reinforcement lane to allow me to pad this out a little bit more and potentially push into Boris. Unfortunately, the Vulcans are moving over, and my Gorno can't get the guns online quite in time, one group dead, the other group is attack moving forward, trying to use that Emetis M, and then I changed my mind, and I'm moving him back, trying to stay out of the way of those deadly guns. Unfortunately, not quite able to do it in time. So, at this point, we've had two of the Blue 4 teams surrender. There is good pressure going into Dimitri, and was actually able to get a kill there, I think the Jogos die. Or, it looks like maybe some artillery from one of my allies able to decap Dimitri. And remember, they had both of these for a little while, so we have pushed them back pretty, pretty far. Uh, Urugan's coming in again, and the point differential now is about a factor of 2, 1850 to 3640. That's pretty rough, so I don't blame them for the surrender there. A couple more minutes of the last guy hanging on, trying to fight the good fight, but uh, that's going to be all we wrote. So I do want to show you the kills and losses, units that did well, and all that jazz. I'm just going to fast forward there at speed 10 to close out the game. Really no differences here. I mean, we're just holding at this point, holding at this point, and Shaq is taking the offensive in to the fragile Roland 3 in the background there, and finally we get that third uh, GG. So, in terms of kills and losses, 4170 to 1945, very vicious game, a little over 2 to 1, and uh, the KDs here were pretty nice, so 1800 to 885, 1320 to 660, over 2 to 1, pretty much for everybody, and my own 1050 to 400, lower overall contribution, slightly better, actually about on par ratio. Um, I think it was a major annoyance to the guy on that side of the field though, only wish I'd done a bit more early on. So. MI-8 MTVs got lots of Humvees and Light Riflemen at the beginning. They also did spot the Humvee CP for my Uragon, which later got that kill guaranteed. A couple of Stinger teams, Humvees, Hemps, and all of that off the Uragon as well. This is the Patriot kill from that BRDM-3. And then the Gornos with a couple of Ihawks and Vulcans really did just, just destroy my opponent's uh, reinforcing line. So that's all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.